My name is Stephen Kim. I'm pastor of Bright Light Church in New York. I come from New York City. Uh, I want to speak about great promise of Jesus Christ. You know what? In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, do not worry. And from verse 25 to verse 33, Jesus said six times, do not worry. Amen. You know why? Jesus said, because I am alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is alive and Jesus will help you. Only if you believe in Jesus Christ, you have no reason to worry about anything. In verse 25, he said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you eat, what you drink, what you wear. Don't worry about economic things, you know? Nowadays, as you know, after COVID-19, so many people are suffering economically, financially, because prices are going up, you know, for example, last year, one gallon gas price was just about two, two, two point nine dollars, something like that. So now it's over four hundred something and five hundred something, and because of the war in Ukraine, Russian invasion, you know, I think it might go up to six dollars a gallon. Mm -hmm. So it's terrible. So we have no choice but to worry about economic things, what to wear, what to eat, what to drink, because prices are going up. Right. My wife was complaining every day. <laughs> oh my God, I went to the market and I brought $100, nothing to buy. $100, no, $100 is nothing now, you know? But Jesus, Jesus told here, don't worry about what you are going to eat. Don't worry about what you are going to drink. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Because I'll provide for you. I'll give you. Okay? I'll take care of you. Only if you believe in me. You know why? Because Jesus is God. Okay, people think that Jesus is just a great man. Just holy man. Jesus is not just a holy person. He is God. You know what? God, the creator of the universe, came down on this earth with human flesh. That's Jesus Christ. Then you might ask to me, Pastor, how can you prove that? How can you prove that Jesus is God? I can prove it. Because Jesus overcame death and death resurrected. He died. He was buried in the tomb. After three days, you know what happened? He rose up from the death. Resurrection. You know, then you might also ask to me, Pastor, somebody, some of the people die in the hospital and like after several hours they could wake up. Oh, after several days, they wake up, okay, but there is a difference of qualities, you know what? When Jesus wake up or woke up from the death after three days, it was the same Jesus, but he is totally different body. The thing is this, when disciples were gathered together in a room, because they were afraid of the Jews, authorities, like police officers, you know. Because they might come to arrest the disciples of Jesus, so they were, they were hiding inside the room. But on the day when Jesus was born, you know, Jesus was resurrected, you know what happened? Jesus Christ resurrected, rose up from the death, and came into the room without opening any door. Because they locked up the door. Nobody can enter. But he just came in. How? 
he has a different body. Even though he looks the same, he has a different body. We call it glorified body. With that body, you have no possibility to be sick. You have no possibility to be injured. It's a heavenly body. It's a glorified body. You know? So, with that kind of body, we don't know how he came in, in the room. He, he could easily pass through the walls of the room. He really did, because he just appeared. So, when he just appeared without opening the door, disciples of Jesus so so much they surprised and they thought this is not a man this is a ghost this is, must be ghost of Jesus so they were afraid and Jesus said look at me I'm Jesus I'm not a ghost I was the man who taught you several days ago I was a man three days ago I died at the cross if you doubt, come and touch my hand. And he showed the hand. You know what? There was a nail mark on his hand. Even though he's resurrected, even though he rose up from the dead, he still had the mark of the nail which has pierced his hand three days ago on the Calvary. Still, when Jesus said, said this, still the disciples are still doubting. How can a dead person could rose up again after three days and appear before us like this? And Jesus said, come, touch my side. You know what, what happened? When they killed Jesus, they used spear, long spear, and pierced the side. And the spear, the head of the spear, went through Jesus' heart. Jesus' heart was broken and blood and water came out. He had a big hole where the spear came in on his side. And Jesus said this, okay, you could use your finger and insert your finger into the hole which is in my hand. At that time, Roman soldiers, when Jesus was killed, they used very big and thick nail. I think this is not working. So this disciples are surprised and still afraid. This might be a ghost, not a person, real person. She said, Do you have anything to eat? And they brought a piece of fish, and Jesus ate it before them. And just said this, okay, as you know, ghost cannot eat fish like this. <laughs> Come and touch me. I born and I fresh. I'm not a ghost. I'm a real person. I'm alive. I'm resurrected. I rose up from the death. I overcame death. Amen. And now I'm resurrected as a, with, with a body which cannot die, which cannot be sick again. That we call glorious, glorified body. This is resurrection. And he is still alive. After 2,000 years, years he is still alive in heaven. And he is going to come again. That is Jesus Christ. So, you know, 
You cannot compare any great man of this of, of, of this world with Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is God. And he proved his deity. Deity means that he is God. You know, he proved his deity by his resurrection. Hallelujah! I'm talking about the greatest person in the whole history of the world. A God, the creator of the universe, came into this earth to save us. He shed his own blood. He died on the cross to save us, to take our sins upon him so that you could be forgiven by God. Everybody's a sinner. If you, if you say that I'm, I'm, I'm not, never sinned, I'm not a sinner, then you are lying. Everybody's a sinner, you know? There's only way in this universe for you to be saved. That means for you to be forgiven by God is to believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Believe in Jesus and you and your household will be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Then you might ask to me, what? what's the meaning of salvation? There is something like inconvenient truth. This is truth, but this is not convenient or not comfortable for us. There is very uncomfortable truth. Everybody wants here comfortable news, but there is a very uncomfortable news. I'm sorry to tell you, but you know what? When you die, when the end of your life comes, if you don't believe Jesus, without faith in Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. Hell. Only if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will go to heaven. Then you might ask to me, Pastor, how can you be so sure that there is heaven and hell? First, because God said so in the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no word in the Bible which is not true. That's why you call it the Bible, you know? There's no error in the Bible. If the Bible said so, we've got to believe it. And this great Jesus promised you on, on this chapter, Matthew chapter 6, he said this. I really like this. I'd like to let you know. His promise. He said this. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in bonds. And he said, and your heavenly Father feeds them. And you are much more valuable than them. So do not worry. Look at the birds. They do not sow seeds on the ground. They do not reap in the, in the fall. They do not gather all the, all the harvest into the barns. They have no barns. But your heavenly Father is feeding them. You are far more valuable than the birds of the air. You are much, much more valuable than the birds of the air. You know why? Because Jesus Christ, the Son, one and only Son of God, the God Himself, came down on this earth and died on the cross, shed His blood for you and me. That's why we are so valuable. If we are not valuable, God will not come to the earth and die for us. You know? He bought us by his blood. That much is so valuable. We're so valuable. 
How can you compare with the birds of the air? If birds of the air believe in God, and God provides everything for them, how much more will God take care of you? So don't worry. If you be only believe in Jesus Christ, God will provide everything for you. What to drink, what to wear, what, what to eat, don't worry. How can I pay rent? Don't worry about it. Jesus is the answer for all of your worries. And Jesus said, even six times, do not worry, I'll take care of you. That's the word of our Father, greatest Father in this universe, our Heavenly Father, our God, and Jesus Christ. And you know what? For six times he said, do not worry. And this is a command. It's not an option. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. What do you mean by command? Command is something we should just obey. Command is not, not, command is not something we could discuss. When a general commands something to soldiers, do they discuss? Oh, before I obey your command, we want to discuss. No, nothing like that. Command is command, you know? If I'm a general command, then other soldiers should just obey. No other way. Otherwise, you, you, you'll be killed. This is a command of Jesus Christ, a commander which is far more authoritative than the command of the army general. The command of God, the command of Jesus Christ, for six times he commanded, do not worry! This is a command. Just obey. Do you know, if you have some kind of worries, economic worries or anything, anything if you have worries, just obey Jesus' words. Jesus said six times, do not worry. I'll take care of you. Only if you believe in me. You know, Jesus also said this. Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Jesus said, why are you worrying? Because I already told you that I will take care of you. I have been believing in Jesus Christ, and now I'm, next year I'm 70, so I have been believing in Jesus 60, for 69 years. God has provided everything I need up to now. So I'm the one who could witness to you, who could say to you that this promise is true. Because I have experienced the power of His promise. Hallelujah! Amen. He's not lying. He's not a liar. He's not a liar. You know, God is an almighty God. That means God can do everything. Hallelujah. God can do all things, but there is one thing God cannot do. You know what? He cannot lie. He's not a liar. Everybody's a liar. We are all liars. <laughs> but God cannot lie. And that we call God of truth. And that God of truth commanded us do not worry for six times. And he said, by worrying, 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 worrying about. Can you add one single hour to your life? Okay, think about this. If you worry, do you think that your life will be like long or shorter? When you keep on worrying, do you think you will live long or shorter? What is your answer? Many Brazilians, what is your answer? 
If you work much, you live longer or shorter? Sure. No? So Jesus said, why worry? Worrying does not help. Worrying cannot improve your situation. So worrying is not productive. So why worry? Worry is unnecessary. If you have time to worry, you believe in me. If you have time to worry, study the Bible. If you have a time to worry, just pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have time to worry, come to church and worship God. Then God will give you peace and comfort. The peace and comfort the world cannot give. But God will give you peace and comfort. Amen. You know what? When you come to this church, okay? We sing together. God raised me up or anything. What did you feel? Whenever I sing songs, whenever I praise God, you know what? I feel peace and comfort flooding into my heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of God is God of peace. And he's comforting you. So just say, don't worry. Why worry? Worry doesn't help you. It's not productive. And just say something like that. And why do you, do you worry about clothes? Clothes means clothing, dresses, okay? See how the flowers of the field grows. And he said this. Flowers does not labor or spin. Yet, I will say that even Solomon in all his splendor was not dressed like one of these lilies of the field. Then why do you worry about it? You know what? There's, there were lilies in the field. And just said, these kind of lilies might be here today, but maybe people just gather together and dry it and throw it into the fire to cook something, okay? That's what I did when I was young in the countryside. Even these lilies, can you see the lilies of the field so beautiful? And just said, uh, the richest person in, in the history of the world, the greatest king, of Jerusalem, of Israel, the Solomon, Solomon king. He clothed it with such a rich garment, but Jesus said, when I see these lilies of the field, the color, design, and texture of this city is far better than the color, design, and texture of the clothing of King Solomon. I clothed this flower Better than King Solomon, then why do you worry about why do you worry about clothes? Our clothing. Are you clothes? So don't worry about it. And just said, lastly he said, so do not worry, saying, what shall I eat? What shall I drink? And what shall I wear? For the pagans do all, all these kind of things. But you, but you, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. All other things, what you're worrying about, what you're asking about, will be given to you. When you seek the kingdom first, what is your priority? In this time of difficulties, wars are going on, prices are going on, you know, people think that I should do something, I should make more money, you know, I should get better job or something like that. Yeah. But God's 
answer is so different. He said, in these difficult times, seek you first. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What, what do you mean by that? In these difficulties, your priority should be seeking kingdom of God. Your priority should first pray. Second, read the scripture. Three, third, come to church and worship. This is seeking the kingdom of God and righteousness. Amen. You know, when do you worry about something? When you lost your peace and comfort of your mind, come to church and worship God. God will give you peace and comfort. Come to church. Hear the sermons. Go home. Pray. Then your heart and mind will be governed by the peace of God. And all the worries will disappear. Amen. In these different times, study, study the Bible, pray hard, come to worship, and serve God. And God will provide everything for you. God will give you everything. God is the answer, and Jesus is the answer to the problems of our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No? That's what he said as a promise. I'm commanding you, do not worry, because I'm alive. And I'm God. And you must ask me, oh, pastor, how can you prove that? You know what? I'll show you just one more thing and end my sermon. There's one greatest example of the power of God in prophecy, in provision, you know? He provided Israelite when they were in desert, when they were in wilderness. For 40 years, even 40 years, in the desert, he provided man the food for them. Even four years. Every morning when they go out to the wilderness, it's a desert. They found something came down like the, like the snow. And they gathered it. It was delicious. We call it man. For 40 years, without faith, he feeds the people of God. You know how many, how many of them? Two million people in the, in the desert. That's the power of God. That's how much He could do, help you. The God who feed two million people in the desert for four years, if you believe that kind of God, don't worry about it. To feed you, to clothe you, to give you money, to support yourself, only if you rely on Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ and God Himself will provide it and help you and supply your needs. So do not worry. Just believe Jesus. He is the answer. He will solve your problems. Amen. You rely upon Him. I'm not preaching to you. Just saying about this. I'm preaching to you my own experience. Amen. For more than 60 years, I have experienced so many surprises and miracles of God. Hallelujah. Our God is God of miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is God of miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just shout after me. Okay, follow me and shout. Our God! Our God! Louder, louder. Our God! Our God! He is a God of miracle! He is a God of miracle! Okay. One more time. One more time. Give them. Do you know or not? Why you're so weak? Okay? Shout more, okay? okay shout again. Our God! Our God! Because God is your Father. Amen. Take care of you. 
and provide for you. Hallelujah. And walk miracles for you. Miracle. Amen. Amen. When I pray, that touches so many people. So many people were healed their sicknesses. Some were healed from their cancer, terminal cancer. Some, you know, many kinds of miracles. I have experienced myself. Even when I pray that somebody is healed from cancer, something like cancer, right? And he said, I'm okay now. And even after I pray, and he said that I'm okay now. You know what? I could hardly believe that. <laughs> when God walked miracle, even myself could not believe it. That's our God is a great God of miracle. And why don't you accept God, Jesus Christ, into your heart and believe Him and accept Him as your Father, as your God? Then God will be a great provider, great supplier for your need. Hallelujah. Amen. So. Close your eyes, bow down your heads, and follow after me in prayer. Okay? Just follow after me. Amen. Okay? Oh Father God, oh, Father God. I, want to you. I want to believe you. I want to believe Jesus Christ. I want to believe that Jesus is God. Please come into my heart, come into my heart. And, be my and be my God, be my creator, be my, creator. Be my, supplier. Be my supplier, and heal me, and me. help me, and, and provide me, provide. and be my eternal Savior. I pray all this. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.